This is a new day to try to get right This is a new day to get on track Yeah, that's life in football This is a new day to live your life This is a new day to try to get right This is a new day to get on track Yeah, that's life in football It's life in football We are life in football You are now listening to the Life in Football podcast Check out the new website, lifeandfootball.com. Welcome to the Life and Football Podcast, baby. I'm your host, Mike Fee. And this your coach, Cole and Moore. You know we loving life and enjoying football. Top-notch coaches all around the world. Top, top-notch coaches all around the world. Today we got a very special guest on. Go by the name of Coach Jerry McIntyre. He the head coach at Tampa Catholic. And this a top-notch coach, man. He got some dogs over there. And I'm telling y'all, man. Pointing to these young men in life, and he helping them not just in football, but in the game of life as well. And I'm telling you, man, when y'all get a chance, check your team out, Temple Catholic. And I'm telling you, when you get a coach who making sure things getting handled, it ain't no way to go but up. Like, they, like uh, Cardi B said in the song, up and you go up and you up. I don't know how to mess it up a little bit, but I done heard it kind of fly. But without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and let Simo bring him on. How you doing, Coach? Man, I'm good, man. How you doing today? Good, you... man. It's blessing to have you on. Yeah, man, I'm glad. I've been checking you guys out for a minute since you did things. So I was like, let me let me come on and get on here, man. Hey. Chop it up. Thanks for, for yes, that sir. you came through. Yes, sir. Now, before I even get into you coaching for that mean green, you was balling in college. Yeah. Now, I ain't checked Tampa when I was in high school like that. Mm. Like, you know, I'm hearing about everything. And then once I, since we in Polk County, I'm focused on ask my team, mm-hmm. which I'm barred to. But then I'll be focused on the people in the county. Then mm-hmm. when it get to playoff time, you kind of peeking over looking. Mm-hmm. So when I see out there at Arbor, and then they say your, your school, you come from, I'm like, they ain't round the way. Yeah. Like, dog. So... How did you actually pick Arvin? Because that means if Arvin wanted you, you was balling for any other school to want you. So how did you actually pick them? Well, shoot, my, my father went there. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mother went there as well. So they okay, met so there. So locked. yeah, yeah. My dad, my yeah. dad had you know it's a legacy. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was actually when he left, he was all time leading rusher. That was long before wow. Bo, Bo Jackson and, and oh, all yeah. those other great backs. Mm-hmm. But um, I always grew up wanting to go to Arvin. Mm-hmm. But of course, being from Tampa. Um, you know, I like the Gators. Right. Mess with, you know, with the U a little bit and mm-hmm. FSU. So mm-hmm. I love the Florida rivalries, but mm-hmm. um it was just a lifelong dream to wanna play for the Auburn Tigers. So when the opportunity came, I jumped on it. Um but I mean I do I love my state. You know, mm-hmm. I'm from here. My my you know, my base family, mm-hmm. uh, my father, my mother and grandmothers and they from Alabama, but I was mm-hmm. born and raised in Tampa, so you know, I'm a Florida boy and I always, you know, like the Florida rivalry. Right. But it was it was a dream to 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 be able to go to Auburn. Now, how does it feel not only being the man at Tampa Catholic, then coming back and being the head man, to which I know you probably coached another position while you was there before you took over the head spot, but how did that feel like, well, how did you even get back into coaching? So really, man, it, when I was done playing ball, I came down and I was coaching in the youth league, TBYFL mm-hmm. or whatnot, and and just wanted to give back, mm-hmm. similar to what he was saying, just kind of pouring into these young kids' lives, and I wanted to give back. and. Mm-hmm. As time went on, uh, some of my former coaches were still at Tampa Catholic, and they said, well, come on and, you know, coach a position. So right. I went on and coached the receivers and um, had some pretty good receivers, and we had some success. Mm-hmm. And then um, the former head coach ended up taking a college job, and, uh, you know, they asked me did I want to did I want to take over. Right. Had a relationship with a lot of the kids and, mm-hmm. and um, had been around there and was alumni and, you know, was able to play at Auburn and go to the NFL, so they right. thought it would be – um, you know, a good look, mm. um, taking over as a head coach. And, and um, it wasn't in, in my plans yeah. to be a head coach yeah. and to even really coach. Mm-hmm. But once I started giving back to the to the community and helping these kids and, you know, helping them get recruited and making sure they're doing what they're supposed to do mm-hmm. on and off the field, you know, it kind of kind of was a blessing in the sky. I went yeah. with it. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's really how it all worked out. Mm-hmm. Didn't, didn't really plan on it, but like I said, I'm happy now and, you know, I want to continue to just – do what I can to help these kids on and off the field. You doing it? Yeah, trying to man. Nah, not coach. To. I played at Alabama State. Okay. So in the gump. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that's where my dad is from. Yeah, okay. he went okay. to Robert E. Lee. So, oh, okay. So I know yeah, all yeah. about yeah, yeah, the Montgomery okay. landscape, Jeff oh, yeah. Davis, and everybody else. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, that's crazy. But small world. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and a lot of times when I'm at when I was at Alabama State, we would get a lot of the Auburn guys come over, mm-hmm. and um, you know, they would go to different events and different step shows and different things, kind of connecting with us in a way. And that's how I met a few of the guys um, off the Auburn team. Um, one of them named was Craig Stevens. He actually was from Tallahassee. Yeah, linebacker. Linebacker. Yeah, I know one and, of them um, boys. And it was kind of, you know, amazing to meet somebody from my same area because I'm, I'm from Quincy. So when I met, when I see him and, you know, we get to talking, like, oh, yeah, you, I'm like, yeah, you know, because he had just got out of Auburn at the mm-hmm. time. And end up, he ended up playing in the national championship mm-hmm. with Cam Newton. Cam Newton yep. Yeah, so, you know, how was it, you know, for you really just, and I want to step, uh, take a step back, with your parents both going to Auburn, you growing up, and I love what you said, you said, man, I always wanted to go to Auburn. Mm-hmm. So how was that growing up, you know, with your parents that got that history at Auburn, and you getting the opportunity to go play at Auburn. So I want to kind of hear that journey, like how it was for you growing up and, you know, having that dream to go play at Auburn and actually going to do it. Yeah, it was uh, it was, it was interesting because, to be honest, like I always wanted to go to Auburn, but being from Florida and visiting, you know, cousins and grandparents, I always thought, man, you know, this country up here in Alabama, man, I don't even know if I really want to go and live in Alabama. Mm-hmm. Um you know, because I was so used to to the crib, you know, yeah. just having fun in the city and whatnot. Um, but, you know, as time went on and I, and I was, went to Auburn or start, as I got older, going to camps and seeing Auburn, it was like, you know what? It kind of changed a little bit. I was kind of like, I like this a little more than the crib because it's, it's, you know, low key, uh, yeah. laid back. So, uh, yeah, that journey really was, you know, it was amazing just kind of seeing it go full circle because um, that's, Early on, you know, Miami was recruiting me heavy. Florida was recruiting me heavy. So I wasn't sure if I was going to, you know, fulfill the dream and just say I'm going to do it just to do it. Mm. But um, it lined up right with the coaching staff and and, and, and the uh, opportunity to play there early. So uh, I went ahead and did it, and, and I'm, I'm very glad that I did do it. And what what your parents felt, uh, what they were talking about during this time as well? Um. Really, they never said anything about me, you know, about the the process, and they didn't talk about it. I knew deep down they wanted me to go, but they didn't want to tell me where to go, you know. But uh, I knew deep down they were like, it would be just, you know, be a beautiful story for him to go and graduate and play uh, where, you know, where we met and kind of where we're from. So they never pushed it on me, but but as time went on, I realized that's where I wanted to be. Now, with you coming back, and now as a head coach, what's your message to the younger players and kind of giving them game on things you didn't deal with and went through? You know, how is it for you, you know, teaching these younger guys today? And what's your message to them? Really, yeah. Well, they, first and foremost, they got to listen. Most of them do listen, but um, really just stay in focus. Um, it's a journey. Everything is everybody's time isn't going to happen right now. You know, mm-hmm. this kid, ninth grader, he might have an offer. Your offer might not come to 12th grade. So really just grind it through. Mm-hmm. Um, God has a plan for for each and every one of you. And uh, don't, don't, um, you know, success doesn't happen overnight. So just keep grinding. You know, keep your head down. Keep, you know, stay in the books and do what you got to do. Coach, you look, it seems like I done seen you somewhere yeah, probably before, have, man. Probably have, probably, have, probably somewhere yeah. in Alabama. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We, used to hang, we used to hang out down there a little bit, stop right. the Tuskegee, go to Montgomery. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Then yeah. going back, coming back to Auburn. So who knows, man? Right, right. I'm around this area a little bit sometimes, too. You know, okay. the Polk County area. I know it's a lot of great football over here. So, okay. you know, I'll stop in and out, check some teams out. And then, so, uh, Coach, my last, this is my last thing right here, man. And we, and we got to talk about it. Y'all know the man poisoned the tree from Alabama that time. He did. I want to know, because when I'm playing ball at Alabama State, I'm really realizing these people really love this game, Auburn, Alabama. Yeah. Like, is it really that serious? Because, see, you got to live it. So I want to hear it a little bit from you. You know what? You know know what's funny? It's funny you said that. Like, when I'm – so I'm from here for me. I said it 
when you plan, it don't seem like it. You just playing the game. You know it's a fierce rivalry. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's intense. But I honestly believe it's more so the fans. The fans make it what it is. You know, the right. players respect each other. We going to grind. We going to, on that Iron Bowl day, we going to give it all we can right. and try to win the game. But I think all the, the outside stuff is the fans. You know, they 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 really dislike each other, seriously. <laughs> you know, they sometimes it may be fights. It could be a lot of crazy stuff that goes on with Auburn, Alabama fans. Mm-hmm. But if you if you if you you know talk to an Alabama player now he might not like Auburn player or I might not like an Alabama player but you know when, when we talk after the fact it's like look that was a good game y'all won we won what whatever it may be but now when you're out there you're gonna get it but but after the fact it's not like the fans and I feel like the fans with the tradition of it all makes it what it is because I think both fan bases are just that passionate about their team you know like I, I talk with. Um, Javier Arenas from he's he's from Tampa went to Robinson. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, you know we talk about Iron Bowls and we may have a you know a little joke here and there about what what it is, but you know we still cool. We're cool, right? Uh, a fan, you know, you may say say a joke or say something about an Iron Bowl in two thousand and five, and they seriously might not they stop talking. You know, um, a coworker, whatever it may be. So it is very intense in the state, um, but I feel like the fans and the, and the fan bases make it really you know, passionate and hatred and everything else. I think the players respect each other and they know what time it is when we're on the field. But the, the fan bases, I think, you know, it, it is very, very serious with, with those fan bases. So uh, I don't want to discredit it, but I just think that's what makes it the Iron Bowl what it is. Right, You right. know, you know did, so. Did you know when Cam came that season and I, I no. Ar- Arbor was losing to Alabama and then I was like, oh. it's like he just brought him back. Yeah, yeah. What did that game feel like? Nah, that did game, you wish man, it, like man. did it do do it? Cause yeah, yes, yes, yes. So it, it was it was crazy, and and that honestly, people don't realize that propelled them to stay undefeated mm-hmm. and go on to play in the national championship. Right. If they would have lost, mm-hmm. then I'm not sure if they would have even made it to the championship against right. Oregon that year. So um, yeah, man, it was it was crazy. Yeah. I was upset. <laughs> I didn't know what was going on. We were undefeated all year, and then uh, obviously he he was able to. You know, with the with the help of his teammates, make a miraculous comeback and, and be able to go ahead to the national championship and and win it all. So uh, those those were some good days. I know right now we're trying to get back there, but those are some really good times with Cam Newton coming on the planes and yeah. uh, and being able to go undefeated and do what he did. What was your? Cause I know my, we rapping it, but what was your best moment being at Auburn playing in a game? Man, that's a great question. Um. Probably my my uh, my senior year, mm-hmm. we played Vanderbilt and hadn't scored the first two games, and I ended up scoring the first touchdown of the season. Yeah, either that one or uh, the first play of the Iron Bowl. Mm-hmm. Speaking of the Alabama Auburn game when when we played, and um, Cadillac Williams broke down the sideline for eighty on the very first play. Yeah, and and, and I was you know sideline yeah, sideline yeah, yeah. sideline with him. So, um, and a lot of those fans still remember that play to this day. So so probably one of those two plays were probably my my most memorable one. On top of beating Florida uh, when they were ranked number one in, oh, yeah. in, in Auburn, we won't beat them by field goal. So yeah. being a Florida boy, I always wanted to beat the Gators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> so we ended up beating them. I know I'm in, in over in Lakeland. I know it's Gator, Gator country. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I, was, I was super happy on that. So um, those are probably some of the most memorable moments that I had mm-hmm. as an Auburn Tiger. Nah, hey, y'all heard it right here, man. Coach Mike Attire, he doing a great job over there at Tampa Catholic, and I'm telling you, man. This is a coach you want to be a part of his program. He's doing some great things over there, motivating these young guys, and he done did it at the highest level. Big time team. And I'm telling you, man, this somebody who done had parents, you know, teach him, give him game, mama, daddy. And he willing to give it to y'all. But guess what? I like what he said earlier. You got to listen. And I know that's a lot of problems. With a lot of just not foot, just football players, but with a lot of young people, I know you know the TikTok and Instagram popping. You got to get on there, and sometimes I know I was a young man too. All of we were young, you know, a little hot, hot headed, and especially when we played ball, we thought we were the best. Especially Simo, he thought he was the fastest <laughs> thing in the in the whole nation, and I thought I was one of the best linebackers in the nation. But you know, 
I know sometimes you got to kind of calm yourself down and actually lock in because these people trying to help you, man. That's that's what it is. And I got to give a shout out to Coach again and thank him again for coming on. And he's doing a great job for not just the football players, but the young men. That's what I got to say. And I'm going to leave y'all how I always leave y'all. Keep your head up. And not down, or else you'll fall to the ground. It's the Life of Football Podcast. Catch you next time.